in ICC, it, it will treat the individual's criminality, but in the ICJ, Myanmar as a signatory cannot avoid its responsibility as a state who has committed the crimes of genocide and crimes against humanity. And just uh, two days ago in the Argentinian court, there has been a case filed under the universal jurisdiction against the leading Myanmar state authorities. So these are the developments which we think is part of a global uh, solidarity and work in support of the victims and also promoting the cause of justice. And this conference surely will strengthen the whole process and create new opportunities to carry this struggle forward. It gives us much pleasure to note that in the academic circle and research scholarship, Bangladesh genocide is getting more and more attention. And of late, few interesting books on the subject has been published. But we still have a long way to go to get Bangladesh genocide recognized globally. And Liberation War Museum is committed to do its utmost in this regard. The gathering of scholars, activists, and researchers in this conference will definitely make fruitful contribution in this regard. We note with satisfaction that the National Parliament of Bangladesh has declared 25th March as the day to remember Bangladesh genocide, and it is being observed nationwide since 2017. We aim to make the observation significant and global so that 25th March became a day to remember Bangladesh genocide for international community, like the Holocaust Day, Rwanda, Cambodia, Armenian Genocide Day, or other tragic days to commemorate. When we commemorate genocide and engage in memorialization, we also uphold the cause of justice. Bangladesh has to wage a long struggle to end impunity for the perpetrators of genocide and ensure justice. The establishment of ICTBD, International Crimes Tribunal of Bangladesh, and judgments the court delivered has now become part of the global battle to establish justice for genocide. At the end, I would like to highlight two great anniversaries that, are going to, that we are going to celebrate in 2020 and 2021. In the coming year, we will observe the birth centenary of Father of the Nation, Bongo Bundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and 2021, the nation will observe the 50th anniversary of our independence. The role of Bongo Bundu as an architect of national liberation struggle has of late been recognized universally when UNESCO declared the historic speech of 7th March as memory of the world. This has great significance and we look forward to 2020 to observe 2020 as the Muji VR. We also look forward to 2021 as a great occasion to memorialize and learn from the history of our liberation struggle. In this conference, we are sure these issues will be in focus and together we can chart the way forward to ensure a world of peace, harmony, and tolerance. We are thankful to Honorable Minister Dr. A.K. Abdul Momen, an old friend of our Liberation War Museum, and also very supportive of the activities that we uh, <coughs> adopt, and also to Professor Emer Emeritus Anisul Zaman, who right from the beginning is with the museum in different capacity and also always an inspiration for us. And most importantly, we welcome and we express our thanks to our foreign participants, distinguished scholars, activists, and also the young participants who have submitted abstract and uh, will present paper in the different panels. And thanks to the guests who are here at our invitation, to the members of the different ministries, especially Ministry of Foreign Af Affairs, and the volunteers and staff members of the Liberation War Museum. So uh, it is again, we look forward to the coming days as a great day when together we will be able to chart a action plan to observe, to celebrate, to memorialize, and to uh, strengthen the global struggle of humanity for truth and justice. Thank you all. Joy Bangla. Thank you, sir. Now, as for the 
international participants. Uh, I would request uh, Mr. John Hubble Weiss uh, to pay some words uh, to the participants. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here and to have the chance to talk for all the others who are here and are from other countries. We've had really no time to experience all or any major part of Golden Bengal, but we did see some of it in the Golden Welcome, the beauty of the people in their manner in their expression and in their dress. Uh, it's in, impossible, it seems, for Bangladeshis to be indifferent. Impossible for them not to see also the larger context of problems. It's impossible for them not to see, in fact, the broader meaning of so many things. And that's we found out in our very brief conversations with them in the last, what, two days? So uh, anyway, uh, and I think it's also impossible not to be inspired by that kind of spirit and also inspired by the spirit of uh, Rinvaganath Tagore. So that's what I turn to and think right now to start this. He imagines a world and a world that brings us also uh, close to that or hope to that same hope, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depths of truth. In that heaven of truth, my father, let my country awake, let all of us awake indeed. And when we saw the camps and we visited the camps, that was a hope that we held also for the people that we saw there and got a chance to talk to, something we've been thinking about for a long time, where knowledge is free, free and accessible to the Rohingya at all levels, all kinds of knowledge. We hope we can find a way to give hope for a better future to them and certainly acquiring that knowledge in various ways from the internet to a teacher right in front of them knowing what they're doing. That was important as well. And so it was in dealing in that in a unified way, making that knowledge serve that we hope to bring in fact that better future to them and that we saw the efforts of the Bangladeshis to do that as well and admired their efforts and what they had been doing and the effort they'd put in to building those camps and doing their best to welcome them. And that's what we want too. We want to look for a way that this larger set of waves that genocide makes in the world of starving striving, spending, believing, and quiet desperation that somehow we can bring that to a larger context and a wider understanding. Thank you, Mr. John Hubble, uh, who have spent uh, his 52 years career in teaching and research pursued in conjunction with political and humanitarian acti activism centered on genocide. Now, uh, I would request uh, Ms. Irene Victoria Massimino to come to stage, uh, who will be also speaking on behalf of the international participant. Ms. Irene Victoria Massimino is an esteemed lawyer and also have been involved in several conferences and uh, our winter schools and other workshops since 2014. 
and uh, she's from Argentina, and she's a great genocide scholar, Miss Irene Victoria Massimino. Thank you very much, dear Noreen. Uh, Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abu Momen, dear friend Mahfoudur Hotzer, uh, dear trustees of the Liberation War Museum and distinguished guests, panelists, friends, colleagues, and volunteers of the Liberation War Museum. Uh, when I was requested to represent the international panelists just a couple of hours ago, I thought uh, that I come from a very far away land. I come from Argentina, a land that is geographically far away from Bangladesh, but has been very close for about 100 years. I cannot think of anyone else but Tagore, just as John quoted, and the relationship he had with Victoria Campo. They met in Argentina in 1924, so almost 100 years ago, and they built a relationship based on love and literature two things that make the world a better place. So when I was thinking today of every experience I had in Bangladesh and probably the ones uh, I've shared with you all, my international colleagues, international panelists, the few days I spent in the camps and the great friendships that Bangladesh had with Argentina, I thought I could go back to literature in order to give those of us working in the genocide field a little bit of hope in this frustrating profession, and also to give hope to those suffering individuals such as the Rohingya or everyone that suffered genocide, crimes against humanity in Latin America, in Africa, in Europe, and in Asia as well. So for that, I would like to read a poem that I will first read in Spanish and then translate it myself into English. Uh, it's a poem by a Uruguayan writer, Eduardo Galeano, who was very much involved in the struggle for human rights in Latin America during the 70s, 80s, and 90s in order to bring memory, truth, and justice for victims. So the poem goes like this, and I hope it gives you, when I feel frustrated by working in the field, I read this and it gives me a little bit of hope. It's simple, but it's profound in the same, at the same time. Son cosas chiquitas. No acaban con la pobreza, no nos sacan del subdesarrollo, no socializan los medios de producción, pero quizá desencadenen la alegría de hacer y la traduzcan en actos. Y al fin y al cabo, actuar sobre la realidad y cambiarla, aunque sea un poquito, es la única manera de probar que la realidad es transformable. They are small things. They do not end poverty. They do not take us out of underdevelopment. They do not socialize the means of production of cha or change, but they may trigger the joy of doing and translate it into acts. And after all, acting on reality and changing it even a little bit is the only way to prove that reality is transformable. So I hope in this conference we interact a little bit and we exchange our ideas and then we can prove ourselves that reality is actually transformable. Thank you very much. Thank you, Irene, for your thoughtful words. Now I may request uh, Dr. Hilary Kremin to come on stage and say a few words. Dr. Hilary Kremin is a reader at the Faculty of Education, University of Cambridge. She reaches, uh, researches conflict transformation and peace building at in and through education in settings in the UK and elsewhere. Dr. Hilary Kremin. Thank you very much. It is uh, a huge honor and privilege to be here. Um, I will be very brief in my comments, but uh, I would like to begin first by expressing my profound uh, thanks to Mofidul Hock, to the Liberation War Museum, to the trustees, to the organizing committee of this conference and to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, who have made our visit 
um, possible and um, who have supported us in our stay here in Bangladesh. Huge thanks for that. So I've been struck that in this conference, in this museum, there is past, present and future very much in evidence in the activities and in the people. So there is a memorialization, a commemoration of the acts of the freedom fighters and we are profoundly moved by the exhibitions that we've seen here in this museum. There is the present with um, the current and ongoing uh, genocide that is taking place and our support for um, the Rohingya and uh, the, the communities in Cox's Bazaar that we've had the privilege of visiting. There's also the future because the volunteers that have helped us and supported us in our stay so far here in uh, Dhaka have been truly amazing. Their dedication is incredible. There is absolutely nothing that has been too much for them to do for us. Uh, they are the future and we can see the links between them and uh, with their memorialization through this museum. We have great hopes for Bangladesh with such young people who are thinking about the future of their country and reaching out to the international community. It's been a delight and an honor, and uh, I thank everyone for the opportunity for us all to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Hilary Kremin. We have a good number of uh, foreign participants who would be speaking in different sessions uh, during the conference and also chairing different plenary sessions. So uh, we would like to introduce you to all the foreign delegates over here. I would request you uh, to just stand uh, in front of your seats so that the other participants could get introduced to you. So I would start with uh, Ms. Devon Gulbratson, Dr. Melanie O'Brien, Dr. Minati Kalo, Ms. Irine Masminu, Mohammad Chengish Khan, Natalia Siniava Pankoska, Mr. Rafal Pankoski, Ms. Teresa Delangis, Mr. Temu Lemester, Cornelis Pants. Ms. Pia Conradson, Dr. Hilary Kremen, Dr. Elizabeth Maber, Lindsay Horner, she's not here, Yusa Wawa, uh, Mr. Nasir Ali has also left. Ilina Slavova. Oh, Nasser Ali is here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Meghna Mohabatro. John Hubble Weiss. Nicole Janisevich. Dr. Helen Jarvis. Nicola Don Kindersley. And uh, Professor Tet Tetsushi Ogata. We welcome you all to the conference. Now, 
we would move to the second part of this uh, con uh, conference inaugural ceremony, and that is the book launch, a book launching ceremony. Uh, the book is going to be a joint effort of Liberation w Museum and Azar, Asia, Asia Justice Rights Network. Uh, so I would request the volunteers to come to the stage with the books so that uh, the guests would start the book launching. The book title is Quilt of Memory and Hope, Stories of Women and of the, from the Rohingya refugee camps. Through saving in the quilts, they have already reflected their life stories, their struggles and victimizations they have faced nowadays uh, before coming to the Rohingya camp in Myanmar. So I may request to start the inaugural ceremony, and I would request uh, Ms. Pia Conradson uh, from Azar, and also Ms. Nasrin Riaz from Azar to come to stage. Ms. Pia is the program associate of Azar, and uh, Ms. Nasrin Riaz is working as a program assistant to Azar. Thank you so much. Uh, this is also to inform you that this quilt will be exhibited in our exhibition gallery. And uh, from today, uh, from 17.30, which means 5.30 p.m., you would be able to see the uh, exhibition in our exhibition gallery in the up floor. So I would request uh, Ms. Pia uh, to say a few words uh, on behalf of Azar and also the Liberation War Museum. Hello everyone, my name is Pia and I'm working with Asia Justice and Rights and we've been working with the Liberation War Museum for exactly a year now. So it's my Bangladesh anniversary. Um, it's been one of the best years I can say of my life with working with the museum but the, the volunteers have really made everything possible. And um, in March this year, we decided that we would do um, a two-week-long participatory research with Rohingya women inside the camps. Um, and Asia Justice and Rights, we've been working in uh, post-conflict landscapes for a number of decades where we've um, developed a number of tools to work with survivors. And so we joined efforts with the Liberation War Museum to um, work with Rohingya women inside the camps. And we devised a number of um, modules to work with the women. And one of them, we wanted to create a process that not only was beneficial for um, you know, us to learn more about their stories, but something that equally healed and encouraged these women as well. And we found that a common pastime in the community for these women back in Myanmar was um, sewing, but they didn't have much opportunity to do it anymore. So this process, we we wanted to learn a bit more about the women's experience that they had, but to make it um, a more of an enjoyable process. So we allowed the women to choose either a hope or a memory to sew. Um, it's pretty clear from their sewing whether it's a hope or, me or a memory, and I hope you do take the time to read their stories. Um, there's some really inspiring stories there. Um, so I just leave it there because I don't want to 
you know, take away from these stories too much and you can enjoy looking at the quilts that the women have made. So they individually sewed a panel, but we've put them together to make a collective story for everyone. But um, we shouldn't forget their individual stories as well. So I just want to say thank you again so much to the museum for making this possible. And um, this is just the beginning of, um, you know, a long-term struggle for justice for them. And we hope that anything that we do, we're uh, as much by their side as we can be. So thank you again, everyone, and enjoy the next two days. The book titled Quilt of Memory and Hope, Stories of Women from the Rohingya Refugee Camps is published by Liberation War Museum in collaboration with Asia Justice and Rights. Thank you, Pia, for your speech. Uh, this book can be uh, found in the, during the conference time, so if you would like to have this book, just uh, communicate with us. Now, I may request our guest of honor, Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, Government of Bangladesh, Dr. A.K. Abdul Mumen MP, to deliver his speech. Our Foreign Minister, have already contributed a lot for the negotiation with international community in the Rohingya crisis. With further, no further ado, I would request our guest of honor to deliver his speech. Uh, good afternoon, eminent experts, distinguished professors, guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be present here at the inaugural ceremony of the sixth International Conference on Bangladesh Genocide and Justice. I express my deep appreciation to all the experts for your presence here. My sincere thanks go to the trustees and the authority of the Liberation War Museum, who has been organizing this biannual event on a regular basis. Ladies and gentlemen, Bangladesh is a country which was born out of devastating yet glorious armed struggle, led by the greatest Bengali of all times, the father of the nation, Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. The liberation war of 1971, a people's war, although ended with our, our, ended with our birth as a sovereign nation, left deep scars, scars of genocide and unimaginable human sufferings, perpetrated by the occupation army and their local collaborators. As per estimates, while six million people died during the World War and Holocaust, and uh, nearly 1.7 to 2.5 million in the Cambodian genocide, one to 1.5 million Armenian, 500,000 to 800,000 in Rwandan genocide. In our liberation war, around three million died in 1971. As per various estimates, since the Holocaust, Bangladesh genocide is the second worst genocide in the world since World War II. Today, as we speak on our journey through genocide and justice, I would like to pay my deepest homage to the memory, uh, memory to the martyrs of our liberation war and also to the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who has struggled his whole life for the emancipation of the Bengali nation and led towards their ultimate victory. Distinguished guest, Bangladesh has experienced worst form of genocide during its birth. During 1971 liberation war, the people of this land witnessed the brutal killing of three million people, displacement of around 30 million 
people, of which 10 million had to take shelter in neighboring India. Violation of more than 200,000 women and widespread torture, rape, destruction that started with the Operation Searchlight on 25th March 1971. According to the report of British journalist Simon Dream in the Daily Telegraph, at that time, more than around seven to 25,000 people were killed on the night of 25th March in Dhaka alone. The pattern of killing show clear intention of the Pakistani junta to destroy certain societies, sections of society on the ground of religion, race, and political belief. Bangladesh is a victim of genocide, remain committed to prevention of genocide anywhere, anytime. We also believe accountability and justice are an important step towards preventing genocide. It also plays important role re in reconciliation and healing, which is important for suffering, sustaining peace. Despite obstacles, Bangladesh has made sure that the perpetrators of 1971 genocide are brought to justice. The trial of the individuals responsible for the genocide and crimes against humanity by the international crime tribunals marked significant contribution by Bangladesh to the global slogan of never again. This daunting task was possible to accomplish due to very strong commitment of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina towards the cause of genocide and justice. Ladies and gentlemen, as victim of world's horrific genocide, Bangladesh from the very beginning of its statehood always been supporting the oppressed and the violated people around the globe. In line of this principle, our Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina decided to open the borders for the Rohingyas, who are one of the most persecuted nations of the world. Unless she would have opened up the borders, there has been possibilities of another great genocide since World War II. By providing them shell, temporary shelter in Bangladesh, Bangladesh Prime Minister helped averting a great genocide. The Rohingya crisis was created by Myanmar and its solution also lies with Myanmar. The end of this, to the end of this crisis would, could happen only by the safe, safe, secure, dignified, and voluntary and sustainable return of the Rohingyas to their own land. However, to stop recurrence of Rohingya persecution and exodus, accountability, and bringing the perpetrators to this crisis into justice is crucially important. To that end, we have remained supportive to the international mechanisms currently in the process towards ensuring justice for the Rohingyas. Bangladesh welcomed the initiative of International Criminal Court and, all, and as a state party to Rome's tattoo, provided all cooperation to the persecution, persecution so far. We are also encouraged by the recent submission of case by Gambia to the International Court of Justice on behalf of the 57 YC member states under the Gen Gen Genocide Convention 1948. We believe ending of the culture of impunity would bring some positive development towards the solution of Rohingya crisis. Distinguished guest, this conference has been organized at a time when we are preparing to observe the 50th anniversary of 1971 genocide. Such initiatives are important tools for creating social framework for atrocity prevention. It is also a very effective forum for raising awareness on the past incidents of genocide, including the one of 1971. I hope this August gathering of learned and eminent scholars from all around the world will contribute to the efforts of Bangladesh government 
for the international recognition of 1971 genocide. Our government and the parliament has adopted 25th March as the genocide day of Bangladesh. We also expect the experts to shed light and develop insights into the existing challenges to international justice institutions in dealing with the crime of genocide and other international crimes. Ladies and gentlemen, before I end, I would like to express my appreciation to the Liberation War Museum, which has been preserving the valorous Trump, as well as the in indescribable sufferings of the people of Bangladesh in 1971. This museum has been contributing in upholding the spirit of the great liberation war and making our new generation well and rightly aware of the history of the struggle and the sacrifice of the people of Bangladesh. The museum has been creating bridge between generations and making the new generation prepare for building the nation in line with the dream of which for our fighters sacrifice their lives. Bangladesh has always been active to establish a culture of peace all around the world. In this regard, I would like to quote from the speech of Father of the Nation, Bangamundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who delivered uh, his speech at the UN General Assembly in 1974, and I quote, I know that the soul of our martyrs join us in pledging that Bengali nation fully commits itself to the building of a world order in which the aspiration of all men and women for peace and justice will be realized, unquote. I believe all violence and wars emanate from a mindset of intolerance and uh, ignorance and respect, disrespect towards others. Therefore, if we can inculcate a mindset of respect for others, a mindset of tolerance toward others, irrespective of ethnicity, color, and religion, we can hope to have a sustainable world of peace and stability across nations. To inculcate, to develop such a mindset, it is the responsibility, uh, not only of the government, but of the parents, of the community leaders, of the academic leadership, the, uh, the leaders in the synagogue, mosques, uh, mandirs, and the churches. If all, the, all, the, all of them together, in collaboration, would like to create a mindset, mindset of tolerance to others, we believe, away from hatred and uh, intolerance, then I believe we can hope to achieve a world of sustainable peace and stability. Maybe I should request all of you, the eminent person, to join in our struggle to create such a mindset for a better future. Uh, before I conclude, may I request you to visit the displaced people of Myanmar, the Rohingyas in Cox's Bazaar, and listen to their stories of persecution, suffering, that tantamounts to genocide and ethnic cleansing. I wish the conference a success. Thank you all. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabundu. Thank you so much for your valuable words. Uh, Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, Government of Bangladesh, Dr. A.K. Abdul Moment, MP. Now, as for the closing speech, I request National Professor Anisud Jaman, who is also a chairperson to the Center for the Study of Gen Genocide and Justice, to say a few words. The guest of honor, Foreign Minister Dr. A.K. Abdul Moman, Trustees of the Liberation War Museum, speakers, participants at the International Conference on Bangladesh Genocide and Justice. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you.
I must thank my friends in the Liberation Bar Museum for having asked me here this afternoon. Uh, I know of the conference and I'm delighted to learn that so many participants from home and abroad have taken part in the conference and made it a success. During our liberation war in 1971, we had witnessed from close quarters the acts of genocide committed by the hordes of Pakistan army against the unarmed people of Bangladesh. That genocide has not been properly recognized by the world community. But we shall strive on and we very much hope that one day the entire international community will recognize that genocide was committed in 1971 against the people of Bangladesh and then the perpetrators of that genocide need to be brought to justice. In the last few years, Bangladesh has sheltered over a million refugees from Myanmar. These people are the victims of genocide committed by the Myanmar army and administration against them. They have treated a long space of jungles and water bodies and taken shelter in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is not a very resourceful country. Yet, we have been obliged to give shelter to the victims of genocide in Myanmar. And we have done whatever was possible for us to do. The international community has taken note of the fact of this genocide, but have not been able to rise to the occasion. Words of sympathy were there. Some physical aid was given, but the international community has not been able to compel the Myanmar authorities to take back the refugees. The refugees must go back to their own land with dignity and honor. This is the minimum that we ask of the Myanmar government. I hope that you will create public opinion in your respective countries so that people know better about the conditions of the Rohingyas, refugees now living in Bangladesh. And they extend their cooperation to these people so that they can get back to their own country with dignity and honor. I hope that the conference, such as the one that we attended, will contribute in creating that sort of an atmosphere. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, I may request Ziauddin Tariq Ali, trustee, Liberation War Museum, to deliver his vote of thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Liberation War Museum, 
I would like to thank the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. A.K. Abdul Momin, MP. I would also like to thank the government of Bangladesh through the Foreign Ministry for helping us in a lot of ways so that this conference is successful. I would like to thank our dear Professor Anisu Zaman, who has been with the Liberation War Museum from 1996 when we started. I would also like to thank AJAR, our collaborators in this effort. I would like to thank the speakers who will be sharing with us their immense knowledge and their commitment to, the, to making the lives of people in distress uh, better in the future. I would like to thank the volunteers who have worked tirelessly and given their sweat and energy in making this conference successful. And finally, I would like to thank the participants of this sixth conference, international conference, um, for participating and who will also be sharing with us their stories of oppression of uh, oppressed people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much this evening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as for the part of this inaugural ceremony, we have changed the schedule a bit. So now, I would request Mofidul Haq and Siyauddin Tariq Ali, Trustee Liberation War Museum, to open the exhibition Quilt of Memory and Hope uh, with our Honorable Minister and the international guests in this conference. Uh, this will be held in the upstairs of the conference venue, whereas I would request the other guests and participants to remain seated in the auditorium so that we can prepare the cultural program and start within a few minutes. Thank you.
हेलो हेलो
Ladies and gentlemen, now you all are going to explore the rich culture and history of Bangladesh. The first performance by the Sh Bangladesh Shilpokala Academy reflects a historical saga narrating 30, th 300 years of Bangladesh. With the direction of Mr. Liyakat Ali Laki, Director General of Bangladesh Shilpokala Academy, the dance will be choreographed by Ms. Yasmin Labonno. Dam diye kine chhi bangla, karo dane. Shigalo, Shoi Pagalo, Jolla Devi Hatere, Taramo De Kun Koira Se Na Na Nu Ju Hatere, Lakho Toron Hashi Hashi, Kai Se Goli Por Se Fashi. I'm 
दाम दियातरे पचिशे मार्च रात सर्वहारा कर बापर सामने दाम दिया मायर अश्रु बनो सम्भ्रम रे बोलते कि क्यों पार तुमरा से दम कार कमरे कत कले दाम दिया बुद्धिजीवी नामी दामी लोक कत ए जन्मे की हुरा बे भारे से क्षत उन्नीस साले दुखी बांगलाजे हमार हम दाम दिए कने कारो दाम दिए कने Through this performance, you were able to know the th 300 years of Bangladesh, including the British rule, language movement, liberation war of 1971, and Bangladesh genocide. Now, you're going to observe the performance by the indigenous communities in Bangladesh. The indigenous communities include the Chakma, Tripura, Khasia, Rakhine, and Garo. Their rich culture and own way of living have always enriched Bangladesh in every manner. The performance is going to be performed with the colors of hill. The team actually represents the indigenous communities in Bangladesh.
this wonderful performance of Colors of Hills was directed by Antur Dewan. Now, as for the last performance, there will be a folk dance representing the areas of Silet and Shunamganj. The type of dance is titled as Bhamail, and the whole choreography was done by Ms. Pifa Chakma. Ladies and gentlemen, with this performance, we end our inaugural ceremony. Now, there is a small refreshment for you at level one of the conference venue. We would request you to go to level one for further refreshment. And just to remind you, from tomorrow, the registration is at 8.30 a.m. And there will be separate registrations for the parallel plenary sessions. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow.